Hello guys, welcome back to Talvin TV. And today, well tonight, it's our first ever football phone-in. Woo! Tonight, we will have fans of United, Liverpool, Arsenal and QPR with us. Let's just wait until we get our first caller. We have a new fifty with us. Thank you for volunteering today. And we got an, a couple questions about QPR on the championship. Thank Question you for having me. Number one, do you think you might get relegated this season? I don't believe so. If we had this conversation three weeks ago, Talvin, I think my answer would have been quite different. But I think we've uh, had a slight... Uh, sort of a delayed new manager bounce and um, hopefully it may continue and we can um, look on, look forward to bigger and better things next season. What position do you think you are going to end up in the end of the season? I think we will uh, about 18th, I think. So it, we, we, we will stay up only just. Okay. Are you happy with QPR's new manager and why? I am very happy. He was a little known name, so uh, I didn't know anything about him before he came. Uh, managing the lower leagues. Uh, I think he had some time in Sweden also. His name is Sifuentes. Uh, it took me probably about six months to learn how to pronounce his name. Um, I unfortunately don't go to games as much as I used to. But just what I gather from friends of mine that still go um, and checking stats on, online, we're keeping the ball a lot better. We've got, we're getting more and more shots on target. Our possession stats are up uh, and we're playing a lot classier brand of football, um, the, a possession-based game, which is um, exciting times. Uh, next, you have got Sunderland and then you've got Birmingham City. What do you think re the results will be? Um, they're both very difficult games. Uh, I'm sure you've heard before the old adage, there's no easy games in the championship. I do believe it's uh, the most competitive league in the world. Um, I think it, they will both be close affairs. I think uh, more so with Birmingham. They, uh, we're flirting in and around the same positions at the bottom of the table with Birmingham. So um, I think we might... Uh, there won't be many goals. There unfortunately never is uh, uh, with QPR. But I'm thinking... Um, uh, a win by one goal in both games, maybe a 1 0 or a 2 1. And I think either or for both of the games. I hope you win one. against Birmingham City. For those who don't know, I am an Aston Villa fan, and Birmingham City are my rivals. Yes. Okay. We will. I, I will I will do everything. We will do everything we can to make sure we get a number over Birmingham just for you, Talvin. Who is your favourite QPR player this season and why? Um, see, this is a difficult question to answer. Could you really say this season? Um, well, but the, the answer to your question will be Ilyash Chair. Uh, I unfortunately don't think he's had the greatest full season, but after Superintendent's um, uh, introduction into the QPR management, um, he's really released Ilyash Chair. And last season, the guy was phenomenal to watch. He really does pull the strings in that sort of um, number 10 position uh, but slightly deeper but he does really start pulling strings from there and very creative um, gets assists and now we start getting the scoreline too so I'll go with Ilyas Chair for the answer for that How many seasons do you think it would take for QPR to get into the Premier League? Well I'd like, I'd like to say we'll be there next season but um, if truth be told Talvin I think we need to build I wouldn't want to just go go up on a, on a whim and then get relegated and then, uh, you know, our team gets picked apart. I'd like to build something. So maybe a, a couple of seasons, sustain ourselves in the middle of the championship table, uh, sort of uh, to, to then progress on to sort of playoffs or maybe an automatic position within the next three years. But I would like to do it more progressively and slowly with someone like uh, Sifuentes in charge, who's like I was playing a great brand of football. I'd like to sort of, if we do, or when we do go back to the Premier League, would like to stay there a bit longer. If you could sign anybody for free this season, who would you sign? Um, uh, on a free transfer? Yeah, on a free transfer. Anybody? Anybody. 
Uh, Virgil van Dyke. Virgil van Dyke is a strong decision. Thank you. I think that a, a, def a, a great defence is um is what's really needed in the championship, and someone like Virgil van Dijk, uh, where he could be a leader at the back for us, that would be a that would be my go to. Yeah, okay. I think that's all we can fit in for now. Oh, Bye. thank you very much, thank Talbot. You for thank you for being on my YouTube channel. Thank you very much, and uh, congratulations, and I hope your YouTube channel is is a success. Hope you like our. Uh, you're the first person to be in Talvin's football phone in. Oh, thank you. And I Hope love you it, Have Calvin. a lovely rest of the night. And to you. Thank you. Good luck with it all. Good luck. Bye. Bye. Hello, mate. How are you doing? Hello, Amon. Um, <laughs> you all right? Hello, Amon. Um, we're very happy to have you on Talvin TV today. I'm very happy to be here. Fantastic. You are Good a day. second person on to on tonight's but first ever football phone in. Oh wow, that's fantastic. I feel honored to be in your presence. Happy birthday as well, mate. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. So for our first question, we have do you think Arsenal can win the Premier League this season? I definitely think we can. It's going to be very tight, but um, yeah, I wouldn't be a fan if I didn't have faith in them winning. Um, I hope they'll win. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Okay. Do you think they can win any more silverware apart from the Premier League? I think the only thing we're left in at the moment, um, Champions League give that a go but um it might be a season too early but um we're doing well we just got to get past Porto and then um yeah maybe I'm not overly confident with that but um definitely Premier might League. be another season to work with yeah absolutely do you think Arsenal will win against Man City in that uh next game what uh, do you I think would the say results yes. will be it's definitely possible but it's going to be definitely difficult I think um what I saw today of Man City playing Liverpool, um, you know, they're a very tough team. And yeah, we all know that. So, um, but we've beat them before. So um, I'm going to say, yes, we can beat them again. Arsenal are a different team this season and have done really well. They are a lot more resilient. What do you think has changed from last season? Ah, that's a really good question. I like that. Um, I'd, I'd say probably... Like most things, you have to learn how to to win. And I think last year, a lot of people said we bottled it, but I think that we just came unstuck with um, sort of various injuries and just bad luck almost. Um, this year, I think we've got a stronger squad. I think the mentality is probably the thing that's improved the most since last year. Um, so we know how to grind out a win. And as you've seen over the last few weeks, um, we've done pretty well at scoring goals. So I'd say that's the main thing. We've changed our mentality. And so hopefully that's going to carry us through. What do you think of the new signings like Kai Havertz and Declan Rice? And uh, yeah, Kevin I mean, Rice. Declan Rice, I've always liked. I thought he was very good when he was at West Ham. Um, I didn't really have that much love for Kai Havertz, but... Um, He's definitely grown on me and um, he's got us out of trouble a few times. So, um, yeah, he, he's a gooner. Uh, and so um, I'm pleased the goals that he's scored has really saved us. So, yeah, I'm supporting every single one of our squad. Um, yeah. Are there any areas in the team where you think you might need a bit of extra squad depth? Um, there was a talk about maybe a striker, but um, as you've seen... Pretty much a lot of players within the team are scoring, but um, I definitely think that we would do it maybe a bit better if we had one central person that could be um, up front and who scores our goals. But you know, at the moment, I've got no complaints. But if there was one position that I think we probably need to strengthen on, it would be a striker. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think Arteta made the right decision by benching Ramsdale and <laughs> using David Raya instead? Oh, that's a good one. Controversial. Um, at the time, pretty much probably like most uh, Arsenal fans, I was a bit confused. I didn't know why he would choose to 
bench Ramsdale because he was such an integral part of our team. But we've seen how David Raya has performed. And I think that in this situation, I think he's definitely better um, in terms of passing out. And, you know, he's been brilliant for us so far. So, yeah, I think it, it, was, it seemed quite harsh, but I think it was the right choice. I would have stuck with Ramsdale, if I'm honest there. Yeah, He's a favourite player for Arsenal this Ooh, season so far. Favourite player. I'm going to have to go with our star boy. Um, I love Bukayo Saka. I think um, not only as a footballer, but I think I really I like him as a person. He seems like he's really down to earth. He's genuinely a nice guy. So, um, But to be fair, there isn't anyone on the team that I've got any kind of um, hostility you- towards. Yeah. Who would you want to build the squad around? Ah, it's a good well, I mean at the moment I think definitely Sacco is is brilliant. Um a lot of our players have been moved into sort of various roles that Declan Rice is further forward and you can see that he's scoring goals. So um I would say that he he's definitely I think Arteta just is a mastermind when it comes to um squad tactics and so he's made very good players a lot better. So um yeah, if we're going to build it, do it around Saka. He's young and he's energetic. And I think that, you know, not only does he do well on the wing, but he scores goals for us as well. So, yeah, Saka. Martinelli is being a bit quiet, but sometimes he's coming in a lot. What do you think about it? Yeah, I really like him. He, he's he's a brilliant player. I think equally like um, Saka, I like his wing play and, he, you know, he can score as well. So, um I think, yeah, last year we saw a lot of him scoring goals and assists. This year it's been a little different, but I think that's probably because we've got lots of other players that can do similar things to him. But yeah, when he's in the team, he's brilliant. I love him. I'm pretty sure Arsenal are at the top of the table. How do you feel about that? Oh, yeah, no, I'm happy. I, I um, Don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not going to get carried away because this league is really tough, but... um. For the moments that we are at the top, I'm really happy. I think I'm one of those supporters that, you know, whether the team wins or loses, you know, I just want to see that they've performed and they've tried their best. But being top of the league is brilliant. Um, I've really, I've not got anyone to really boast to, but um, yeah, I love it. Top of the league. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it will last for long, though, because <laughs> you're only winning by goal difference. That's very you know, unkind. Before Man City might step in. It's very true. I mean, yeah, like I said, each week, if we win, then I'm happy. Um, we can only do win each game and then see what happens. But the other teams are very strong. So, um, yeah, we'll just keep going until the end. Ten more games to go. Would you say you're dominating London this season? <laughs> Of course. Um, although Spurs did really well today. Um, yeah, I'd say so. I think we're doing all right. Obviously, Chelsea aren't anywhere to be seen. Um, teams like Brentford, Fulham, they're not even in the equation. Sorry, sorry for those fans. But yeah, um, I don't even think it's between us and Tottenham anymore. I think they're fighting for fourth and we're fighting for first. So yeah, we are. North London. <laughs> Do you think we'll get make it into the top four this season? Ooh, okay. Well, I would love Villa to stay there. Um, but based so on today's play, <laughs> we love a Villa team. Um, I think Tottenham might make it. Um, I think it'll be a close battle between those two teams. But um, if it was a choice between Villa and Tottenham, I'm definitely going Villa. <laughs> Up the villains. Yeah, uh, the villains. Um, <laughs> thank you, Amon. That's all the questions I'm going to ask for you today. Oh, brilliant! Thank you very much, Talvin. It was a pleasure to be on your show. Um, pleasure to are... have you on my our show. <laughs> have a great day. All right. Have a great night. Thank you, mate. Take all care. Rest of the day. Cheers. See you later. All right. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Hello, everybody. We have got Palam Assad in for some questions about Manchester United. Every Hello. Hello. Hi, Talvin. So, Talvin, before, before we start, can I just say I'm very privileged to be on Talvin TV. Thank you for having me on. And you are on our first um, ever um, football phone-in. 
So oh, yes, I'm excited. I'm very excited. If you hear if you hear screaming in the background, it's not my fault, it's my family. Yeah, we get a lot of that. Okay, so my first question. How do you feel about Onana and Goal? Would you want to sign a new keeper? I would say a good that's a very good question. I would say um we've just signed him. Even though he's been not great, he is improving. So I would say let him play for another two two another season and a half and see how we go. Because you when you spend that much money, it's very difficult to buy another goalkeeper. And if you spend that money again, you don't buy other players. So I say stick with him for now and build his confidence. Is Granato your next prodigy for Manchester United? I I'm not a big fan on prodigies. I'm a big fan on team play. So I like good players. Uh, I like Ganacho, but when you put that much, if as United fans, you put that, that much pressure on Ganacho and these sort of players, A, they become too big for their boots, and B, um, the fans rely upon them too much, but actually they should be an element of the team with that creative flair. So I think he's a good player, and I want him to do really well, but I wouldn't call him a prodigy, no. Against the... Uh, that boy who were... He scored, but he scored against Galatasaray, the Turkish club. Yes. Would you give him a bit of credit for that? And would you say if it's, would you say it's better than the one Ronaldo scored against Juventus in the Champions League round of sixteen? I'd say they're both equally as good because it's a very difficult skill to do, and that's a very nice goal. It's a very creative goal, and it takes a lot of skill and flair to better pull that off and technique. So both of them did amazing with that. So uh, I, that's what I do like about Ganacho is sometimes you need a player that has a little bit extra, but there, it's very important for a player like Ganacho to keep his feet on the floor. Like like we did for Villa, for example. He worked hard for you guys and did so good for you. So that's how I view it. But also, Ronaldo was a bit of a prodigy when you had Sir Alex Ferguson. So how, what would you say about that? I would say Ronaldo was a prodigy. But United were lucky because we had quite a few of them. We had Paul Scholes, we had Ryan Giggs, um, we had quite a few players in at Beckham. We were very lucky, to be honest. So we had a couple of players that I would put in the same class. Obviously, you could say Ronaldo is better in certain aspects, but they were all amazing in their own way. So I think we were quite lucky. But it's all down to hard work and then and then believing in yourself. So and being creative as well. So. <laughs> Time for a new page. What position do you think you are going to end up in this season? That's a really good question. Talvin, I love the questions, by the way. Uh, I'm happy to be on Talvin TV, and I think your questions are brilliant, by the way. I would say we're going to finish sixth or seventh, maybe. We're not. We're, the, reason, the, reason, the reason being is, yes, we are getting results, but we're not playing great. So that will catch up with us soon. So that's how I view it. And I think it's between Aston Villa and Spurs for that that fourth position. Do you think yeah. you can hit Champions League glory next season? Uh, no, because yeah. we're not doing that great in the Premiership, and then you need a you need, you need a stable base, and then you go Champions League. Us going to the Champions League is like going on holiday. We enjoy it, and we get knocked out. So. Where do you lack in squad depth? Like, if you can sign anybody, who would it be and what position? Okay, so I won't go into the signings, but I say we lack in centre mid, um, depth in the striker position. So we have one striker, but then no no backup for striker. And I would even say even defence, because we've got so many injuries at the moment in defence. And Johnny Evans is, I don't know how old he is now, but he's too old to be playing for us. So... I say we've got a complete rebuild on the hands from defence, midfield and attack. So it's going to be a few years until we do something with that. What? Who was your favourite player from Manchester United this season? Wow, that's a really good question. Oh, Talvin, I love your questions. OK, my favourite player for United this season. Hmm. I would say... Um, oh, God, that's a really tough question. You could throw Ganacho in there to be fair, because Ganacho has been playing well. Um, 
You could say Hoyland. I've liked Hoyland. When he wasn't scoring goals, and when he was scoring goals, he scored in the Champions League. He wasn't scoring at, during that period when he wasn't scoring the Champions League. He wasn't scoring the Premier League. That's not his fault because guess why? Rashford and Ganacho were being very selfish. They weren't setting up goals for him. So he was having to make his own goals. If you look at his stats, he's created more chances for himself than his teammates to create for him. I like Hoyland a lot, to be honest. And then outside of that, uh, Varane's been pretty good. There's a couple of players. So let me list them. Varane, Hoyland, Ganacho, And, hmm. Rian's, Rian's whispering a nana in my, my ear. I'm like, no. <laughs> so I would say those three, yeah. Okay, final question. Do you like Eric Ten Hag? Hmm, that's a tough question. Talvin, you're, you're asking some really hard-hitting questions. I would say... Maybe... I'll tell you why. I'll make it very quick. So... He played really good brand of football under, under Ajax. He came to United. And I'm just looking at the tactics. I can't see it. And even, even he's admitted that he's not playing the Ajax brand of football. And that's why we brought him in. So I would say maybe close to a no, because I think his time is running out and he's he's doing a lot of teams come to our home ground and they outplay us. And I think that's unacceptable. If you're playing at home and you're a strong team, you should be playing better than the opposition. And every team seems to be outplaying us. So I would say maybe in the middle, close to no, to be honest. And I think Aaron T T Eric Ten Hag will probably be moving on this summer. we we'll get a new manager, I believe. Okay, that's all. Thank you for being on our show. Hello, everybody. We have got Uncle Dave joining us to talk about um to talk about Liverpool. Hi Say Salvin, how are you today. doing? So we Happy will birthday. get straight so, on thank you. Thank you. We'll get straight on to the uh, questions. When Klopp leaves who when Klopp leaves Liverpool, who would you want to get as manager? Do you agree with the owners? Would you stick with Shabby Alonso? I don't know. Xavi's doing great in Germany, isn't he? But um, I, I trust the club and Michael Edwards is coming back now. He's a very important guy at the club. He got Klopp in in the first place. So I trust the club to point, put the right person in charge. They don't usually make many bad decisions. So and Klopp did be. come from Germany. That's right. Yeah, he's decent. We love Jürgen. It, they'll put a statue up for him when he's gone. He's pretty special. How do you feel that Klopp is leaving at the end of the season? Uh, I get why he wants to go. He's kind of he puts all his energy into it, and he's just knackered. Kenny Kenny got like that after um, slightly different after you probably won't remember this, but Hillsborough and all of that sort of stuff. He, it, it drained him, took its toll on him. But uh, it's a tough job leading Liverpool, so I get why he'd want to go, and he's going out on his own terms. So, but. Uh, yeah, he yeah, has I'll been be at the club for over ten years. Yeah, I'd be sad to see him go, but he's uh he's done a lot of things. He he kind of when he came in, we weren't we were mid table, struggling in Europe, and he won everything. So he's uh he's turned the whole club around, and you know we're one of the best teams in the world now under him. So yeah, we'll definitely miss him. How do you feel about the city result one one? Do you think he's uh, doing better? I think if Diaz would have had his shooting boots on today. Did you watch the game? Yeah, I watched the game. Yeah, if Diaz could have finished one of those three, he could have had a hat trick today. Um, yeah, I saw he could have. We, had we, we absolutely battered them, I thought. And uh, a draw feels a bit like City got away with one rather than it feels a bit like we were a bit un unlucky, but you make your own luck. We missed chances, so, you know. It'll, On it'll the all second come half, yeah, you were starting to get to them and they were struggling a lot more. Um, yeah, we, we battered them, Talvin, is the way you should say it. <laughs> where do you think the squad lacks, well, needs strength? Uh, Liverpool squad, where is it lacking? Yeah. In... yeah, we don't really have a lot of depth outside of the first sort of 
probably four, 14, 15 players. So you, there's, there's a good first 11. There's a couple of good players on the bench. And then a lot of youngsters get a chance at Liverpool. So if you're a youngster, go to Liverpool because they'll play you because they haven't got a lot of choice. But we, we, we're competing with countries that are backed by, you know, oil, Emiratis, you know, Saudi Arabia and UAE and all these who have unlimited resources and we're never going to be able to put 22 players on our pay bill who, who are all worth a billion quid. You know, that's not Liverpool's way. You'll, you'll find diamonds in the rough and polish them. But so I don't think we're ever going to have a team of 22 superstars. It's just not at, our way. At January, you um you were going to sign Kai Sado to Liverpool. How do you feel about how you didn't sign him after his first debut he gave away a goal for Chelsea. Yeah, it looks like a good business that we dodged a bullet. <laughs> he's he's awful at Chelsea, isn't he? Are you sad that you could have signed Jude Bellingham but he went to Real Madrid instead? Yeah, he would have been a good player, but he didn't want to come. So if you don't want to come, there's lots of other good players who'll play, you know, players come and go. As you get older, the older you get in football, you learn that. It's just kind of... What would you say about Darwin Nunez's finishing when it comes to tackles? He's a rock star. I love Darwin Nunez. He causes havoc. I'd, I'd pick him every day of the week and twice on Sunday. This is what he gives. He got a penalty for us today. Do you not see it? He gives so much to the team. When Nunez plays... And then plays, scored it. Yeah, when Nunez plays, we um we're a different beast. He's got pace, he's got power. Everyone else sort of feeds off him, so he, he just changes our whole team. Defenders have to sit back; they can't push up. It changes how they play against us. So, yeah, I'd pick him every day of the week, regardless when, if he didn't score a goal. <laughs> when you um beat Sparta five nil, did you like? How was? Did you like Don Nunez's goals? I thought their keeper was was rubbish. I'm going to be a polite word, but yeah, it it, it I think five one flattered us. Sparta Prague were a decent team, and Nunez probably the, any decent goal he would have saved Nunez's goal. It looked good because it's thirty yards out, but I don't think their goalie was up to snuff. If I'm honest with you, well, do you have hopes of winning the Europa League? I want to win everything. Why not? Hi, I want to win the league. I want to win the high hopes of winning the Europa League. Yeah, why shouldn't we? We're a good team. I think we'll win the league. I think we'll win Europa League. I think we'll win the FA Cup. No one, no one will want to play us. We're a good team. Apparently, Arsenal are beating you on goal difference. Do you think you can beat them the next time? We haven't got to play Arsenal again, but Arsenal will play go to Man City in a couple of weeks. And I think they'll get smashed. I don't think they're as good as Man City. We and just I, had I, we just had Oman speak about um Arsenal for a bit. Oh he yeah. He said he has high hopes of winning the league against Liverpool. Okay. I think if Arsenal beat Man City, they'll win the league. But I don't think they'll beat Man City at Man City. I think that'll be a tall tall order. Taller. He Talk said up. he thinks the results will be good. After today's results at Anfield, can they win the league or will Man City win, win, do another treble? Oh, we'll win the league. Yeah, that result's done now. Yeah, we'll beat everybody. We've got 10 games to go. I'm not afraid of any of them. We've got to play Man United and we'll smash them 8-0. They're easy. Um... Do you have high hopes of um the winning the treble next season? Yeah, Next season, uh, I don't know. We we'll see who they put in place. We're gonna have a new manager. He's gonna take time, isn't he, to put in how he wants to play. So I imagine there'll be a year or two where we sort of bed in. You'll get you'll get time at Liverpool, the new manager. We don't we don't sack him like that. We give everyone a bit of time. When Jurgen came in, we weren't great for a while. He sort of took a bit of time to get going, and then look at him now. So 
So I'm not expecting him to win the league. Other clubs like game. Man City and Arsenal will take advantage of. Hundred percent. They'll be stupid not to. They should fill their boots while we're we're wounded and down, trying to rebuild. If they don't, then they're silly, because <laughs> we will be back. Uh, that's all there is to talk about. Thank you for coming on Calvin's foot, football phone in. I've got a question for you. What? What happened to Villa today? Um, uh, I'm not sure what happened. <laughs> we right. kind of just lost it when they scored. and We kind of just lost confidence as they kept Maybe scoring. Mess of it. Yeah, I made a bit of a mess. Muddy. Don't worry about it. Yeah. All right. Happy Thank birthday, you. all right? See you later, kid. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for being on my show. Oh, it was fun. See you later, mate. Bye. Bye. Thank you guys for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Talvin TV. Stay tuned for more football phoning by Talvin.